Hey guys, so I know everything uh, is looking a little different right now, a little crazy, kind of hectic. Um, however, we wanna be able to, to, to give you guys as many opportunities and resources as possible. Um, and so a couple of things that we'll be doing is we'll be doing um, Zoom meetings for our youth nights. Um, we'll be doing uh, videos via Instagram, so follow us there at Living Water, uh, or at um, our, our youth page. Uh, just follow us there, we'll be posting videos daily um, with, with just kind of Bible verses, uplifting thoughts, things like that. Um, we'll be doing every week, we'll be doing our regular lesson. Um, you can find all of that at our website at livingwatercc.com uh, forward slash students. Um, you're going to be able to, again, you'll see videos from me and Pastor James with weekly, weekly lessons. You'll have discussion questions to go with those lessons. You'll have youth night videos um, for or youth night discussion um, materials for your, your Zoom meetings. Also, um, your, your um, youth night leaders should be reaching out to you um, to, to let you know time and um, login information to be able to do that. Um, but we still want to be able to connect with you guys. We still want to be able to, to ultimately uh, share, share God's word with you um, and continue to grow in, in that. And um, Actually, some of what we'll be talking about today in today's lesson um, specifically talks to kind of what do we do in times like this? How do we handle uh, situations um, that, that arise, how do we continue to remain faithful and disciplined in our, our studies, in, in our, our understanding of God's word? Um, and and the, the best part is God clearly orchestrated this because this is the lesson that just happens to come next in our, our series of lessons. And so um, we're going to be talking about that today. We're going to take some time. We're going to break it down. Um, and so uh, we're going to dive right into today's lesson. But let me just go ahead and pray for us. Um, for this time that we'll, we'll have together and then uh, we'll, we'll read some passages and I'm, I got a few stories that I'm gonna tell you guys and um, so we'll go from there. So just go ahead and bow your heads with me, close your eyes. Dear Lord, just thank you for this day. Thank you for this this opportunity that we have to um, continue to, to do ministry together. Lord, I, I thank you that, that we live in a time and an age that we have the technology that we can utilize um, to, to be able to, to continue to help um, those in need, to help students, to help our understanding and growth in your word, Lord. And I thank you for that in your name I pray. Amen. Okay, so um, like I said, I, I, we're going to kind of dive in and we're going to continue our, our lesson in what is discipleship. Um, we, we have kind of talked the last couple of weeks um, uh, really trying to unpack um, what it actually means to be a disciple, what it looks like. Um, we're going to be taking the next step in, in that. And so uh, if you guys remember what we've been talking about it is um, – or what we talked about last time you guys were here, um, it was uh, how, how our salvation kind of empowers our discipleship, right? If we, if we truly are saved, we should be excited about that, and that should drive us into to a life of discipleship. And um, today we're going to be really talking about what does that life really look like? How do we continue to do that? And then not only how do we continue to do that, but how do we continue that in times like this? Uh, in times that, that we're on a, a state of emergency, we're in quarantine, where whatever you want to call it, uh, just when times are, are uncertain, when we don't have answers to questions, when we just don't know what to do with ourselves. I would imagine a lot of you guys uh, are at school, and so even if you're doing some homeschool stuff, that probably doesn't take up as much time as school would do, so you probably have a substantial amount of free time. Um, you're not allowed to do sports, all of those have been canceled. Um, you're, you're, you're not allowed to go places or do things, so you, you really just are kind of sitting in this state of limbo. And so we're going to talk about how do we continue to, to live a life of discipleship in, in the midst of those. Um, and so uh, before we really get into that, I'm going to kind of just give you guys, guys a story to help bring in a, a concept that I really want us to focus on, right? So I had, um, so I know many of you guys, I've talked about this before, at the last church I was at, um, I, I joined their student, student leadership program. Similar to what we do at Living Water, but a uh, little less structured than what we do here. Um, really, it was just a group of guys and we got together to, to plan events. Um, it, it was fun. I really enjoyed it. But um, at one point during this time, the youth pastor at the time said, hey, you guys know what? I, I want you guys to, to teach a lesson. If you're willing, I I'll help you prepare it. I'll help you do the study. Um, I want you guys to actually teach a lesson to the youth group. Well, I was in the middle of trying to figure out what I actually want to do with my life. This is my junior year. I didn't really know um, what I was going to do. Um, I, I still didn't even after this experience. But this was kind of I look, took this as, OK, well, maybe this will help me understand what God has for me. If I am supposed to go into full-time vocational ministry, such as being a youth pastor or a pastor, whatever that looks like, um, this could be a fantastic opportunity for me to try and, and see if that was 
the case. And so I, I jumped on the opportunity. Um, and, and so over the next couple of weeks, we spent uh, an extensive amount of time in study and understanding. Um, I knew the passage inside and out. I knew the, the Greek um, translations of the words. I knew uh, I broke it down. I could tell you all the historical background of the passage. I had so much head knowledge on that passage. I thought I was going to get up there and just kill the message. Yeah, except for the fact there is a very key component that I forgot to prepare for. And that was how to actually present the information. See, I had the information. I had the head knowledge. I just didn't know what to do with it. And so I got up and I gave the message. And um, I actually walked away from the message thinking I did a pretty good job. Um, and then it was came time for the evaluation portion. If you guys have been part of student leadership here, you know James and I, um, we're always doing that evaluation portion with you guys, right? And so he wanted to do that with me. So we sit down, we start talking about it. And whether he meant it this way or not, whether, whether this was his intent or, 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 or if I read too much into it, it doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is this is the way I took it. He said something to me that, that kind of wrecked me. Uh, it, it just destroyed any inkling that I had that I could potentially be a pastor. Um, and so what he had said was that there is opportunities for people to become pastors who don't become speaking pastors. You see, what I heard that in that was not what he actually said. What I heard was, you sucked at preaching, you're never going to be good enough to actually do that as your job, right? That, that is what I had heard. And there's two responses I could have to that. There's one, I could take that, that criticism as a devastating blow and continue and just uh, move on with my life and try to figure out something else. Or I could do what I actually did. And I, I, I took that as, as, while it was hurtful and while it, it really made me not consider not wanting to be a pastor, I also didn't like the fact that someone said there was something that I couldn't do out there, right? He, he had told me that basically, again, from my understanding, that, that I couldn't do it, I wouldn't be good enough to do it. So my stubborn nature kicked in and, and I had to prove him wrong. I, I had to do everything I could to learn how to become a better Preacher, And so what I did is I started watching other guys. I started taking notes. Uh, a lot of times when I was taking notes on a Sunday morning, it wasn't actually about the sermon. It was about how he was giving the sermon. Um, I, I started reading books about how to, how to teach, how to preach, how to do different things. I, I worked on practicing my speech. Not, not, not like practicing speech is, but, but practicing how to talk, how to articulate things. Different things like that because I didn't like the fact that someone said I couldn't do something. So, so I had, had an option there. I had, had two choices as to what I could do. I could either get better or I could let it go. And, and what took me to get better was discipline. In order for me to actually be hard set on proving him wrong, proving that I could be good enough to do something that I felt I was called to do, I had to become disciplined. I practiced my speech regularly. I watched videos and took notes regularly. I read books regularly. Now, I didn't neglect the study. The study that I did, this, the preparedness that I had going into that message was important. And that also requires discipline. But in order for me to actually do what I felt God was calling me to do, I had to be disciplined in that. I had to continue to, to grow in worship and, and, and understanding how God made me and how God gifted me to do that. Because I did believe it was a gift, but it needed honed. I needed to figure out how to actually do it. And so what, that's what we're going to be talking about today is that discipline element, right? If there's something that you want to do, if God is calling you to do something, you need to be disciplined. So if you have your Bibles, um, turn with me to Luke chapter 9. If you do not have a Bible, pause this video, go get a Bible, come on back because we're going to read this passage. Luke uh, uh, chapter 9, we're going to read just a few verses, starting in verse 23. It says, And he said to all, If anyone comes after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what does a man profit if he gains the world and loses it or forfeits himself? You see, Jesus is calling us to something better. He's calling us to discipleship. If you guys remember what we talked about a few weeks ago, what is discipleship? Discipleship is the, the devout following of something. And so when we call ourselves disciples of Jesus or we call ourselves Christians, we become disciples of Jesus and our goal is to follow him. He says he calls all. 
right? He calls everyone, anyone who is called to me needs to do this. Everyone who's called is called to discipleship. And, and a disciple is disciplined. A disciple knows what God, the, what God wants for us and is willing to do that and follow through that in, in a, a manner that represents discipline. So, you see, when we talked last week, we talked about uh, there, there isn't hierarchy, right? We, we talked about this concept that, that a lot of times people think, well, I'm a better Christian than you. No, that's not true. That's ridiculous, right? If we're all Christians, we're all called to the same standard. We're all called to be disciples. Disciples are called to be disciplined. And so when we understand that we're called to be disciplined, when we're called to be disciples, we, we can start to see what, what we actually Want what God actually has for us. So we're going to break this passage down a little bit. We understand now that, that he's calling everyone. Anyone who claims to be a Christian is called to discipleship. Discipleship is called to discipline. So what does it say? It says, anyone who follows me and comes after me will deny himself and, make, uh, and take up his cross daily and follow me. Right? See, that's a recurring thing. Right? So is discipline. When God is calling us to, to pick up our cross daily. We have to choose every day that we are going to follow Jesus, no matter what's going on, no matter what's happening in our lives, we have to make that decision to be disciplined and follow. And so we need to understand it's a reoccurring thing. This isn't a one time, oh, I'm a Christian, right? Yes, you said that salvation prayer. Yes, you had that moment where, where you came to, to Christ or you, you do truly believe in your heart of hearts that, that Jesus died for you and, and to save you from your sins. And you believe all that and that's great. And at that point, that, that's the, the point you become a Christian. But the process of becoming a Christian is an ongoing process. It's a daily process. It's taking that cross daily. So what does that actually mean for us? What, what are our application portions for this, right? So how do, how do we do that? How do we become disciplined? How do we to stay disciplined? And then... What does that look like in the light of situations like this, right? There, there's, uh, in the, one of the links with the video, um, there's a, a sheet that you guys are going to have that you can print out, and I highly recommend you print out and do it. It's called the Dis Discipline Evaluation Sheet. It's got a couple of different things on it, like uh, how often do you read your Bible? Rate it one to five. How often do you pray? Again, rate it one to five, and they're all rated one to five, but, but there's a couple of different options for you to be able to kind of process through to, to gauge your discipline, to understand that, that you need to have discipline, right? Just like if I wanted to become a good t uh, teacher, I needed to be disciplined in my understanding of how to become a teacher. If you want to become a good Christian, you need to be under disciplined in understanding how to become a Christian. That means being in your word daily. It means reading the Bible or praying daily. That means being in fellowship and community daily, right? That's a little hard right now, right? It's really difficult to be in community. In fact, right now is kind of the hardest time because not only can you physically not be with people, but there's a, there's a, a natural instinct to, well, I can't do anything, so I'm just not going to do anything, right? It would be really easy for me, James, the Balance of the Living Water staff to take this as a vacation, to take this as a break and not put out any content, just stay at home, play video games, ride it out for a few weeks, right? Or however long this is going to last. And, and that may be the struggle that, that you're faced with now too. It is, you know, yeah, maybe my teacher's sending me some homework. Maybe my parents are getting on me to do chores and I'll do those. And sure, that's fine, but I'm just going to stay home and play video games, or I'm just going to read a few books, or I'm just going to what fill in the blank, right? Our, 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 our natural instinct is when we're told we can't do something is to eh, let's take a vacation. Right? But we still have to continue to be disciplined. So what does that look like? Well, the way that looks is tuning in for these videos, understanding, trying to understand God's word, taking these videos, talking to your friends about it. Yes, you can't be with your friends right now, but you all have cell phones. You can talk to your friends. Right? You can do it through text. You can do it through Zoom. You can do it uh, over Facebook, uh, Instagram, however you can do You can communicate with your friends. Right? We're, we're committing, James and I, Pastor James and I are committing to putting out um, content for you guys regularly. We want to, to be able to have that for you guys as a resource that you guys can tune in, watch, take a look at, see what's going on, figure out how to, to, to do stuff, right? We want you guys in the word regularly. We want you communing with people. That's why we're trying so hard. Pastor James and I took an entire day vetted through every networking video streaming site we could find 
to try and figure out the best possible options for us to continue small groups. Why? Because we're called to community. We're called to be part of, of, of a larger body. And we can't do that if we just stay at home and watch TV all day. Guys, eventually you're going to run out of things on Netflix, right? It's going to happen. But, but the fact of the matter is we are called to a life of discipline. Discipline doesn't just happen naturally. Discipline is, is creating reoccurring patterns, right? One of the things I highly, highly recommend is get a, get a notebook, like a spiral notebook, journal, whatever you want. You can do it on the computer if you want to do it that way. That's fine. But create like a, a, a list of, hey, I'm going to do this stuff daily. And then as you do it, check it off. And it can be, I'm going to read my Bible for 10 minutes. I'm going to pray for twice a day. I'm going to pray or uh, make sure I reach out to a friend I haven't seen in a while. Great. Do it. Check it off. That's dis- being disciplined comes when we create habits and we can't create habits if we're not actually doing anything. So that's my challenge to you guys it is as you go through, through the questions that I gave you, um, which is a very similar format to, to the questions we've been doing um, the last couple of weeks while we were still here. Um, it's really processing through that, that next step logical thing. What, how do I going to take what I heard today and apply it? What's the main idea? What, what's my biggest takeaway? What changes in my life do I have to make? How am I going to make those changes and what's step one? Right? We're going to follow through that pattern. We're going to continue doing that. That's going to be attached every week to these, these videos. I highly encourage you, you do that. Don't just watch these videos and not do the, do the extra stuff. Don't just kind of shrug it off and be like, oh, I did my church today. Check. Right? Those aren't the kind of check marks I'm talking about. I, I'm talking about genuine devotion to God. I'm talking about picking up our cross daily. Picking up our cross and understanding that God has called us to something bigger and better and we have to be willing to follow him to do it, and we have to be disciplined in that. We have to pick up that cross daily. Let me pray for us. Dear Lord, I just thank you for this day. I thank you uh, for what you've done for us. I thank you that you died on the cross to to save us from our sins, Lord. I thank you that you call us to to a life of discipline and devotion, a, a life that we have to pick our cross up daily and follow you, and that has to be an active choice to continue that following of you, Lord. I thank you for that, and I pray for, for our students, uh, Lord, as, as we go through this uncertain time, that we can remain faithful in you, we can remain disciplined in our study of you and our understanding of you, Lord. In your name I pray, amen.